Welcome to A Game of Ice and Fire, a video series devoted to A Song of Ice and Fire War Game by Cool Me or Not. We cover all aspects of the hobby with tactics and list build videos, painting tutorials of varying levels, and battle reports. In today's video, we're going to be going over some quick painting tips for the followers of Bone. So here I've just primed the model in black, and then I'm coming in with a mix of uh, Death Shroud Forest, is what it's called? Death World Forest from uh, Citadel, or GW. And then I this color is a little too green for the way I want my free folk to be painted. So I mixed in a little bit of uh, FW Burnt Umber Ink. I think it's Dollar and Roni. I, I'm not sure what the, the company is like super called, but... Um, they're just the bottles that you would find at like a Michaels or Hobby Lobby or another like craft store or something. Now with the highlight, I'm kind of coming at like a 90 degree angle. No, more like a 45 degree angle with the airbrush. And I'm just catching some highlights with that Death World Forest mixed with uh, Leather Brown from Vallejo Game Color. It gives it a nice little... Uh, it, we're still kind of pointed towards that brown green side, but I do want to highlight this up a little bit for reasons we'll get into later. So I end up mixing in a little bit of Menoth base from P3 to that uh, Death World Forest and Leather Brown Vallejo game color mix. And this one I'm coming at almost a 90 degree angle, but not quite. You can see I've kind of started with the wash here. But uh, I do want to try and redefine some of those uh, details in the recesses. So, uh, Seraphim Sepia was too light, Agrax Earthshade was too dark, and both are too brown and not kind of pointed towards the same kind of greenish color. So I took those, or I took the Seraphim Sepia, mixed a little bit of my Burnt Umber ink, and then put some Liquitex Flow Aid in there to try and get some of that, like, covering, uh, uh, property that comes with the ink uh, to kind of go away so now I can get it into the recesses. And you can see here it's done a pretty good job of trying to make sure that it looks like it's nice and shaded with the wash that I created. So now I'm going to go in and take care of the fur. The Followers of Bone are a really uh, busy model when you look at them, but once you start painting them it starts to, that complexity starts to kind of melt away a little bit. So at least for this model, the other ones I haven't quite gotten to yet. But we're just going in with, uh, this is just, I think it's just called Black from uh, Scale 7.5's Fantasy line. Uh, in my opinion, there really isn't such a thing as a bad black. I think that every company out there makes a pretty decent uh, black paint for the most part. There's a couple that I haven't quite gotten my hands on to try. So I really, if you just find a line that works for you, you can go with it. Um... So the fur is probably some of the more uh, screwball-y things on this model because typically what I like to do when it comes to fur is I like to dry brush it because it kind of gives it that dusty, strandy look that you want from fur because the hair is any natural item that you find, especially hair, is just so chaotic that the dry brushing kind of helps uh, give this sense of like natural quality to it, you know what I mean? It's kind of hard to explain, but w instead of dry brushing this model, which uh, I really wish I could do, but I don't think I can with this because we've even got some on the arms there you can see. We, there's fur everywhere on this model and there's details all over the place that we don't want to hit with our uh, dry brushing. So what I'm going to do instead is uh, use some different mixes of black and grays and then just highlight it with my brush in a little bit more of a haphazard fashion. So now I'm mixing into my black uh, somber gray or shadow gray from Vallejo Game Color. And I'm just going to kind of hit the tips of each little like tuft of hair on, on these uh, pelts that he's got. And uh, I'm trying to leave behind as much of the, the recesses as I can with this just to, so I don't have to come back and redo anything in here. Uh, if you did get a little uh, nutty with uh, with painting, one of the things you could do here is just start with the, uh, the somber gray black mix and then go with uh, a black wash like a Null and Oil from GW or whatever black wash you uh, prefer to use. I'm not being super 
uh, detailed on this one because I will be coming at it with another level of highlight after we're finished with this one. We're just really trying to get some of those, uh, some of the parts highlighted that are going to be sticking out a little bit more. So I end up, you could go just straight somber gray or shadow gray for this next highlight, but I decided to kick it up a notch and put in uh, wolf gray from Vallejo Game Color. This is kind of more of a bluish gray, and uh, I'm sorry for pulling off the lent off the frame here, but I'm trying to experiment with trying to paint closer to the camera, and it's really just zoomed in, but uh, it still kind of gets in my way a little bit, so I'm trying to be cognizant of where my my like area of capture is. So I apologize for for the problems that you're going to find in this video, but I hope that getting closer up with this model is going to show you some more of the the brushwork that I do. And right now I'm just kind of like now you can just see like how little I'm paying attention to where these little highlights are going. But as soon as you get it on a table, uh, you're not really going to notice much. Uh, you could use a smaller dry brush to just go in and like dust these a little bit if you were really good at controlling it. But, uh, you know, whatever works for you. So we're hitting the bones now. And I'm using that same uh, leather brown from, or it might be snake leather, from Vallejo Game Color. No, it's just called leather brown. And I mixed this with uh, the P3 Menoth base. And I, I feel like those two colors mixed together give you a nice start for um, some kind of more aged bone. Like it's, it, it just looks... It's a nice way to start. The one thing you're going to notice as I start painting this model, or as the uh, the color starts drying up, it's starting to really blend in with the uh, the greenish brown that we've painted on the model. But we're going to be highlighting this bone several times, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. So we're just kind of going through, and uh, since one of the things that's nice about these colors being really close to one another when they dry is that I can really just kind of hit the bulk of the bone that I'm working with and not so much uh, have to paint or not so much that I have to paint the entire thing like the skull here I have to go over the whole model but I'm not having to pay attention to the little uh, the, the little eye sockets or anything like that because the shadow that gets created with the wash that we used and the greenish brown that we made just kind of works pretty well for the model and now we're working on the rib cages that are on the shoulders and those ones I do want to pay a little bit more attention to in trying to get the whole bone covered since they're very prominent they're not just like little details hanging off of his belt or anything like that so we're just still working on bone when I had first uh, heard these models were releasing I was really interested in uh, working on uh, some kind of tutorial where I started with the bone and uh, and worked from there, but the model is not mostly bone. It's mostly that the, whatever color you decide to paint your leathers on them. And uh, I was a little bummed about that, but I at least can understand after looking at the model why they only have a five up save because they basically have trinket bones and not bone armor. At least that's what it feels like to me. So now we're coming in for the first highlight, and this is just straight P three. Menoth base. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite uh, like ivory cream colors to use for bone painting. Uh, it just works really well for me. It used to be um, the old GW bone, but when that ran out I had to find a suitable replacement and this one really ticked a lot of the boxes for me. Uh, typically though, I don't find myself liking a lot of the P3 paints. The Just the way that they're formulated doesn't work with the way that I enjoy painting, although this one just really gets done what I want it to do. Um, and we are leaving a lot of the... Uh, we're covering up a lot of the um, the original like base color for the bones that we put down because we are going to highlight this one more time after this. But we're really just, and you can see that I missed these, so I'm not, I'm being really like not picky with them, and I'm just going to highlight the bones anyways. Uh, there are a lot of, a lot of small details on this, on these models that you might miss out on. So the skull's a little bit on the funky side here because it's the one part of the, the bones that has a real big area on it that isn't just, uh, it's not so intuitive to highlight in that you can't just like swipe 
a lick of paint across it and then call it done you can see there's a huge separation between where the curve of the skull starts and where that highlight ends so i'm going to take a little bit of my p3 uh straight p3 menoth base and mix it with the previous color that i had laid down as that base coat and while they're both wet, I'm just going to kind of spread them around and mix them together to try and smooth the highlight out a little bit. Now when this dries, there's still going to be some separation there. And you can see that I kind of skipped over the back of his head. Uh, it looks like I tried to fix it. But when you've got 52 of these things sitting around, uh, I'm trying to really speed through a lot of these without sacrificing a ton of detail. But the the details that I am going to skip over, like trying to smooth out the skull's highlight, is uh, perfectly fine with me because I just want to get this unit painted so I can start uh, throwing it on the table and not have to worry about... Uh, like, at, most of my free folk are painted right now, so it's usually not something I care too much about. There's not, like, this huge, like, initiative for me to get all my stuff painted when that... or when I don't have a lot of it done. But since most of it's done, I do kind of want to make sure that the... Lord of Bones, or not Lord of Bones, the, uh, I'm just going to call them Bone Bros, are finished out. So we're coming back in with the last highlight for the bone, and this is just mixing titanium white from the Scale 7-5 line. Now whites, on the other hand, like black, it's just about every company does a decent black. It's really hard to mess that color up, but white is one that's really touchy. I would super stay away from the foundation color from GW because half the time when you pick them up off the shelf, they're curdled anyways. And uh, the Vallejo game color white, although I'm a really huge like supporter of Vallejo game color stuff, that white really has this hard time separating depending on what you're mixing it down with. And if you're going to airbrush with it, it ends up kind of getting chunky no matter what you do to it. Uh, if you thin it down too much, uh, it ends up just becoming too liquid and doesn't really stick well. But the Titanium White from Scale75's Fantasy Game Line, I'm pretty sure. It might even be called Dead White. Uh, it's called Purity White, geez. Um, that one is really good for mixing, thinning down, and just laying on its own. I think it's probably one of the better whites that I've used. Now, Vallejo makes a primer for white, that polyurethane stuff for airbrushes. I think they advertise it to be used for brushes too. But that stuff works pretty well too. It still kind of has some of the same issues as the game color stuff, but it's not so bad. So a lot of the color on this model is very similar. We've got kind of like the brownish green and the, the brown coming from the the bones and we'll have a few leather pieces on here so I decided to mix it up and bring a little bit more visual interest to the model by painting a lot of the leather straps with this brown dark red mix so for that I used uh, Marion Brown from Vallejo Game Color mixed with one of my favorite reds clotted red from Reaper and uh, I know that he kind of is looking a little bit like a death metal Keebler elf, elf uh, but I think that you can use the contrasting colors to kind of break up some of the model and make them stand out a little bit better. And that's what we're trying to go for with this uh, this reddish-brown mix. Again, sorry for the, the camera angle garbage. I'll get this figured out eventually. But uh, we're just storming ahead, kind of getting the base coat on a lot of these leather straps that they've got. I'm going to leave the... I'm going to assume that's like some kind of animal spine or something that he uses as a weapon. I'm going to leave that alone for right now and go with the traditional like brown leather straps just to not have so much red on him. One of the things that you could do here is try and break the model up by making some different some of the different leather drapings more uh you can change the colors on them, but for me I like a whole unified color. It kind of gives me a a better at least I feel like I have a more interesting presence on the table when all of my uh, when my entire army's kind of got the same like color scheme kind of going in on it. So uh, we're we're hitting just the easy highlights with straight clotted red, and I'm not going too crazy with the highlights because I do not want to hit Christmas in or Christmas north of the wall look with them. Uh, working with red and green at the same time can be really difficult to. Uh, to, or it can be difficult to try and skip that. Um, 
because they're so iconic color or they're, the color combination is so iconic. So when you do something like point the uh, point the the colors in different directions, like my red is more brown and my green is kind of this more pukey color. Uh, that way you can use those two and it doesn't look uh, comical. So here I'm just using, I think this is straight Marion brown again for the axe handle and the leather wrappings around that s section of spine. And uh, for the hair color, I decided to go with a gray. I'm sure that uh, the following Bones has knows no age limits. Um, and unfortunately, again, he's got he's got a little bit of hair that wraps around that skull in the back. So uh, I made sure to hit that. And the, the faces on these models are a little funky in that they don't show a lot of it. So I'm just assuming that the little, like, chin thing that's hanging out from under him is a beard. So while that uh, gray is uh, drying up on the top of him, I decide to go through and do my base. And all my bases usually start with a brown and black mix. And these paints I just get from uh, my, my local department store. They're, I use crappy paints on the bases so I can use good paints on the models. So with this gray, I I feel like I shot the highlight up a little too fast here. I should have gone with a mix. Like this is a mix of black and uh, uh, wolf gray from Vallejo Game Color. And then I just come in with a straight white. And I feel like the highlight's a little too stark. Uh, I should have stepped it up a little bit slower. And then I realize I leave a little bit, or I got a little bit on the bone here for his rib, rib cage shoulder armor. So I just cover that up. And uh, we're going in with the skin tone now. All my free folk, for the most part, have bare skin hands. Uh, they don't wear gloves or anything. I, I don't know why I just decided to do it this way, but uh, I think that they maybe have just a good resistance to cold or something. But I'm mixing in my go-to Free Folk uh, skin tone with Tindalos Red and Resurrection Flesh from uh, Scale 7.5's Fantasy line. And then I come back in to highlight with just that straight uh, Resurrection fle Flesh from scale, from that mix, or the, the base coats mix. And I'm not trying to smooth out any separation in the colors here. The, the hands are fairly dainty, so I just want to make sure I can... Uh, establish the highlights well enough and not really spend too much time focusing in on it. So now I'm coming back in with uh, Harvester Flesh from that same uh, fantasy line from Scale 7.5, and we're just doing a lot of the the uh, the super highlights. I have to do a little bit of work on the fingers here because I did maybe get a little sloppy with that last highlight, so I had to pay a lot of attention to how I highlighted those top fingers. And that's about the run of what we've got for the hands. So we have, to, as I was looking over the model, I was like, oh, he's got that little tassel. So instead of uh, making it seem like it's part of the leather strapping that's on the uh, the top of his like spinal cord club, I decide to use that same uh, brownish red that I was using earlier and uh, just finish up the highlight on him. So now we got some stills of the model with the snow on there. This is that secret weapon snow strategy that I use. Um, you can see the model turned out pretty well, and it's not. it didn't take very long to do this. Even with me speeding up the video, it was probably only like an hour and a half max of work. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and that it gets you painting your free folk or your, um, your followers of bone a little quicker. I don't know what I'm going to do differently to the Lord of Bones or the, the Bone Lord's Chosen or whatever to make them look different, but you can keep up with us on Facebook. Uh, you can check out our podcast, which we now have a three-man uh, or a three-person uh, format for. Uh, stay tuned for a bunch of other painting tutorials and tactics discussions, and uh, we're getting some battle reports up soon. I have a couple in the hopper that I need to edit, but they're just taking a while for me to get to.